G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today's project comes from a very special request from one of my lovely subscribers who was after a little angel pattern uh, to use for a, a non-profit organisation which is supports women who have lost a child. And uh, the idea was that these little angels could be made, made up quickly and easily and uh, certainly help to raise funds to support and help those women. So I thought what a great cause and what a great way to pay it forward and I was pretty sure that you would all like to make some angels along with me. So I've got the pattern already and it is really simple and there's so many ways to personalise this little pattern and you can see that she holds her precious little bundle there great uh, symbol of comfort uh, so I hope you'll enjoy making it so will you need your pattern and I have a free pattern ready for you all and it is in the description box below all you need to do is click on that link I'll also put it at number one in the comments for you so it's a little bit easier to find and uh, you can print out those free pattern templates on your own home printer when you go to print those pattern templates out just check in your settings on your printer that you're printing at actual size that way your printer won't resize those templates and I always include seam allowances in my pattern makes it easier for everybody so let's get busy making our little angel so to get started on this little angel let's first just have a little look at how she's put together now because this was a special request and uh, it was for reproducing this one over and over to be able to uh, sell to raise funds for charity so I made it very very simple you can really embellish this one though and I've gone for that classic look as I usually do keeping it simple but I have done a lot of bead work on the beaded applique stitch and the beaded wings which is it's very very simple I'll show you how to do it takes a little bit of time but the effect you can see is really lovely so I've just gone for the golds and the pearls here you can see that it's put together very simply then from behind you can see those lovely wings are tied on with that beautiful ribbon there a little bit of trim on the base but it's really that beading that makes all of the difference you may not go for classic colors you may be making a really funky little angel and I think that the angel regardless of your belief system I think that the angel is pretty much a um, we all think of comfort and of protection when it comes to the concept of an angel and I think that would work in so many different scenarios I think it would be a beautiful gift for an expectant mum especially if you, you know whether they're having a boy or a girl and then you could coordinate the colours to suit um, just a lovely comforting presence um, or perhaps you know there are there are ladies who have lost babies through miscarriage and perhaps this is just a lovely thing that you could do for them um, and, uh, and certainly we could all do with a little bit more a bit more comfort and protection in our life so why not pay that forward so as you can see this one is those gold tones and so my next one I'm going to be making up in silver tones I'm deepening that skin tone so you can you can change all of the colors up all that you any way that you like so let's have a look at what we're going to need to put this little one together okay so we'll start off with our front and our back body pieces so you can see the silver and gray tones that I'm going for I would have liked a foil uh, fabric as I did with this one couldn't find it so I'm going with the gray and the roses I think that will work just as well once those silver accents are added so we've got our front and back body pieces they are both just quilting cotton with my favorite fusible woven interfacing on the back um, and that is a medium weight you do need that interfacing on there and I have both those front and back pieces cut out you're then going to need a base that covers our base plate so our base plate is cut you've got your template there and it is cut from matte board if you can from picture framers the matte board is usually to get them to keep the off cuts for me my local picture framers and this is just cut from that I've actually cut two pieces and glued them together with craft glue the day before so this is as strong as any wooden disc if you do happen to have a teddy bear wooden disc that is 75 millimeter that's the size that we need so that's our base that goes in that makes this little one stand up then we need a base cover just to finish off that base really nicely and that is just a piece of felt with interfacing 
Um, it can be double felt, um, will work just as well. Something that will coordinate. You really won't see it. It's just about great finish. We're then going to need our little appliques for the front. Now I'm going with a double heart here and I'm keeping it all very silver and white and neutral. So I'm going to have white felt. Now I'm going to be sewing around these two and I'll be using that same blanket applique with the bead stitch with the same little pearls because I think that's a lovely effect there. And it really gives it a 3D kind of almost sculpted look. So I really love it. So we'll go with that. I'll be throwing a little pretty little uh, glass looking flower there, which I think will coordinate well. You can add any kind of embellishment here. You could personalize this little project by adding a name in one or two of the hearts and that would be beautiful as well. Um, you can add embroidery, any kind of embellishments you like there. So as I said, you will need a strip of something for the base. Um, it just finishes it off nicely, a nice braid that will work. And then we're going to need our wings. Now our wings are cut from double felt. Double felt is simply two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. And uh, I actually have a video that shows you how to make double felt and prepare your felt for sewing. I'll put the link up the top there for you so you can check that out. So just cut those out of double felt and I've gone for white to keep everything crisp. You'll also need little arms. Now the little arms are actually sewn and then filled just on the at the very end perhaps a tiny little bit in the upper arm but not very much so it's really just about sewing them together now i've cut them from felt with uh, fusible webbing applied to the back we won't be using it for fusing we're using it for strength it, it just seals those edges and keeps everything nice and crisp so you need your two arms you can see that's the skin color i'm going for this time so it's a little bit darker and we're going to need something to attach our wings so something coordinating i'm going with a nice silver ribbon there which you can see crosses over at the front and then it ties up at the back so keeping everything toned the beads i'm going to be using are these tiny little round ones for my applique on my hearts and then i'm going to go for really bring the silver in this bead is slightly larger but it will still work I'll show you how to do that and that silver will be lining those wings you'll need extra strong threads to do your sewing and a little bit of pearl thread to do your eyes and uh, just to do your base and then we need our little head pieces so our little head pieces we've got front and back and that is our little skin color there and then we're going to add our little bun and hair on top with a darker color so you can see it's a totally different look that I'm going for this time and also we need the little chest piece which actually gets fused onto the front section which gives us a little neckline and we will be stitching in a little necklace there and stitching that one into place that will bring it all in together well we need also two little buttons to attach our arms because they're going to be joined with buttons and I've just kept with that silver and pearl theme we're also going to need a button to join the head on the back which is how we do that there just something that coordinates as I've got there we're going to be filling with polyester filling and to make our baby we're going to need our little baby's head, which is around about a 15 millimeter bead. That seems to work best. It can be a little bit smaller, but probably not bigger. Um, and I've gone for the darker tone this time as well. Very, very simple the way that I make this little baby. You need a little ch one chenille stick, one long chenille stick. And we need just a strip of quilt batting just fine batting there and it is just about 12 inches long and it's about an inch wide so we're just going to be wrapping that to create our little baby shape and then to cover our little baby's head and give him a little uh, swaddle we just need your piece is your measurements are there in your templates and I've cut this one out of actual t-shirt material, material. So this is a stretch knit. I'm obviously going for the little boy 
baby this time. On this one, I used a little bit of pink muslin. So it doesn't need to be a stretch fabric. Um, it can be either. And it could be a little print, just a little cotton pretty print, whatever you like will work. I think probably something with a bit of stretch does swaddle easier. So if you have something like that, definitely use it. What you'll also need is some clear craft, craft glue, something that is suitable for fabric and quick drying preferably. You'll definitely need a doll needle, a medium sized doll needle for this project and you will need an awl and ideally you would have a wool felting needle and a wool felting needle will help you pack your stuffing in and keep it into place so that will be really handy so aside from any other embellishments that you might like to add to this little one as i said i kept it all very simple i'm going to do the same simple little beads just repeated throughout so our first step will be to start with our applique on the front so our first step is to take the backing paper off of our neckline piece there and we're going to fuse you see that one will fit in perfectly over the top there it will line up beautifully we just need to press that one on with a hot iron and a protective cloth and while we're there we can add our little heart pieces also now it's important that this little heart the point of this first little heart needs to sit three and a half centimeters from the base because we have to allow for our pulling in of that base section three and a half uh, centimeters and make sure that it is centered then your second little one just gets tucked in just into that apex there just leave a little bit of room between it remember we're going to be sewing around them so you don't want especially if you're adding beads you want a bit of room around them so we want all three of those pieces fused into place with a hot iron and protective cloth so there you can see I've got all of my pieces in place they're pressed on and the first thing I've gone ahead and done is I've just taken this one to the machine and I've just stitched very close to the edge in a matching thread just that neckline in in that little V shape and then I've gone ahead and stitched in I'm using white just so it really stands out on this one I used more of a gold you can see there on that little necklace there and it's just about creating that little line we're going to go ahead and add our little beads there uh, a little bit later but for now it's just stitching that line in two times you can mark it out first and then stitch that on on the machine so once that is done we can move on to our little hearts there now as I said you don't have to do this beaded stitch you can just sew a blanket applique stitch if you like you could take it to the machine and sew a close little zigzag you could perhaps do that with metallic thread um, or you could just sew a straight stitch all the way around the edge whatever you like you may need, want to add any kind of other little embellishments at this stage but for me I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch but I'm going to be incorporating a bead into every stitch so I've got a single strand of extra strong thread and if you're adding beads you will need it to be an extra strong thread and I'm just coming out I've got a knot in the end and I'm just coming out right on the edge of that little template there I usually start on a nice straight section somewhere nice and fairly inconspicuous so that's little knot is holding there and I've got my beads all ready just on a little tray where I can grab them quickly so before I make a stitch I have to add a bead so just take one up on your needle now the I do have a video that shows you how to sew a beaded blanket stitch which is very similar and we're going to be using that on our wings a bit later but I will put that link up the top for you you can have a look at that it gives you the, the same idea so I've got my bead and I've just held that one down out of the way and I'm going to make my first stitch right close to where I started and we're coming through the loop so I've gone through both the layers and come out right on that edge again as I pull down you can see that that's holding that little bead into place I need to keep that nice and firm so I've got my thumb there so remember always before you take another stitch you add a bead so on goes my next bead 
So you understand that this takes longer, but it isn't in any way difficult. So there's my second little bead and I'm making sure it's right up against there. Now the width of your stitch depends on how big your beads are. So my beads are quite small, so my stitch is just as wide as they are. And you don't have to go in very deep. And coming out right next to that bead there. Through both the layers and bring my needle out through the loop. And the loop is what has the little bead on it. And you can see each time my stitch is coming and pulling down this side of the bead. Don't let that thread jump over because it will pull the other side of the bead and then it will be all a mess. So always this side of the bead. You can see I've pulled that one down nice and snug and it's tucked in nice and tight next to the other one. I'll just add another one. So let's just grab a bead. Bring that one down. I am using a very long thread. I'm known for it. They say that sewers with long threads are bad sewers, I disagree. I just don't like running out. So there we go. So next bead, ready in position, take my stitch through all those layers. That one's going to have a little knot just to be awkward. There we go, pull that one in, make sure it stays in its place and you can see already one, two, three little beads all lined up and they really don't move. It's quite an amazing stitch, whether you do it as a blanket stitch or a blanket applique, it's such a lovely little stitch. I find it very relaxing to do. So I'm going to continue on right the way around both of those little heart shapes adding my beads as I go. When you get to this little divot here don't try and put a bead in the center. Just do a single stitch in the center without a bead so you've got your bead here and your bead here and they will meet in the middle here and uh, make your way all the way around and then we'll come back and show you how that looks. So there you can see my stitching is all completed and I've added my little uh, beads there on that little neckline and my little button there. Go ahead and add any other embellishments that you like at this stage. And then we're just going to take our back section and our back piece and we're going to line up those edges. Particularly make sure that you get everything even so that when we fill this one that's nice and balanced. And all we need to do now is we're going to stitch a four millimeter seam allowance and we're going to stitch that seam all the way around that top edge and we're going to leave this base open. Make sure you're back and forth on those start and finishes because that's where we're going to be filling and I also sew this seam two times so that it's really strong. Once you have that seam all stitched all you have to do then is I've gone ahead and taken my pinking shears and I've just notched those obvious curves there in at her waist, shoulders and around the top there. If you don't have pinking shears just do a few little snips with your sharp scissors just helps those seams turn and be nice and rounded when it's pulled through. So now I'm just going to turn that one through. And once you have that one all turned through, just make sure that you've rolled out those seams, push those seams out perhaps with a knitting needle and so that everything's nice and rounded. So next is we're going to start filling. Now I use my forceps to do this and starting obviously right up the top with that little neck section. Now all of this body needs to be packed very firm and particularly this little neck section too because that's where we're going to be adding the head and we want it to sit up nicely. So really pack that in there, make sure you're supporting the end and it's just little pieces through that section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill right the way down to the waist as firm as I can till I get down to about here because we've got a narrow section branching out into a large section your filling tends to want to fall down into that larger section so that, that's when your if you can get your wool felting needle in there once you've got that one packed and you can pack that little waist section in that will help you then add the rest up until the base so we're going to keep filling 
until probably just about a centimetre and a half from the edge of uh, that little base there and we want to be packing as we go so that it's all nice and firm and ready to pop in that little cardboard disc so let's keep packing until then there we go so that has our little angel's body all filled out nicely you'll find the back of the neck sits backwards a little don't worry about that once we add that head that won't be a problem at all so now we've got that one packed nice and firm there and you can see that I've gone in with my felting needle and made that base section nice and flat and there's very little give in that at all and now I've gone ahead and used a double strand of my extra strong thread and I've left tail ends hanging and I've sewn a, a little running stitch all the way around starting at the back all the way around it's about half a centimeter or just under a quarter of an inch in from the base and keep those stitches nice and small so it all pulls in nice and evenly and I've just done my first little knot here ready to pull that in and now is where we slip in that base and because you've got it nice and flat everything's going to sit beautifully in there in those edges it's a nice snug fit but we need it to be a nice snug fit to get that real dress finish on the base there so once that one is in and you've got your little threads here hanging it's just a matter of pulling that one in and you need to make sure that your little base is centered so you can move that around while you do it it's looking very awkward because I need to have it between my knees to do this it's really not that hard okay so I will pull that in and I will make sure that that little disc is centered and you need to pull it in till it's about this far in all the way around and then you'll find you can just knot that off at least four times and I usually take my needle and go around again and knot off again just to make absolutely sure anyway I'll get that done and then I'll show you how that looks and there we go so that has that base section and you can see there that I've centered that little one you can still move it while it's still in there and you just need a bit of space left in the middle and just enough to pull that in around so it's just easier to do it off camera that's all so our next step is to add our base and I have my my little felt base and it's already nicely loaded with my clear craft glue and this is just to cover this little base section and it does give it a lovely finish and it's just a matter of lining that up and making sure all of your edges are pushed down and we can stand that one up and let that one dry we will be sewing a blanket applique stitch around that base just to finish it off nicely so we can press that one down and we're going to leave that one to dry you don't want to be sewing that one until it's absolutely dry so we can put that one aside and let's get started on our little face our little head so we've got our front and back pieces you can see that I've already transferred the marks that you've got on your pattern templates for the little eyes that we're going to stitch in those little uh, stitches for eyes so we just need our front section at the moment and we need our little hair piece now this one has heat and bond on the back or fusible webbing all we need to do is line that up and match it up with that top line and we're going to press that one into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth there we go so you can see that I've got there that little one pressed on and the first thing I've gone ahead and done I've taken it to the machine and I'm using a lighter thread than my hair color so it shows up and I've just defined the top of the head there separating that from the bun and just sewn that two times and with a tiny stitch and just that first front hairline there so from here I just like to do a few stitching lines to indicate some hair so the way that I do it is I go straight up the center first and then backtrack then I do one little strand here 
and then one little strand this side then I make one down here one down here straight down the middle and then the same on the other side it's probably easier for you to see on this little one let's just remove her little halo there so have a look there you can see there's a central line and then I go one either side on the bun and then two either side on the hair now it doesn't have to be perfect you have to remember that it's hair so and unless you draw your lines on which I'm hesitant to do to do because I don't want anything showing so I really just freestyle it and if you keep it all done in one motion you'll find that you'll end up with a lovely little star asterisk in the middle um, that looks like a little tiny little star or flower so that works really well but whatever you want to do with your stitching you may want to do some hand stitching on there to denote that uh, hair but I'm going to do the same thing again on my machine so there we go you can see we've got I've got my little indication of hair stitched in there now and our next step is to join our two front and head pieces together now we're not turning this one through we're actually sewing a blanket stitch all the way around and then filling it so you can see that they match up there so I'm using pearl thread I've got eight ply and one strand I've got a knot in the end and I've just come in at the back there of that front piece and come out just between the layers of the felt and the interfacing and right where that brown starts so I'm using pearl thread for the top section and then I will go ahead and change to my extra strong thread to sew the lower face section in a matching thread which will be this color here in the extra strong but to start off with we're just going to make sure that we're all nicely matched up you can throw a little clip in there if you like so as you go now we're going to be sewing a blanket stitch now blanket stitch I have a video tutorial that shows you how to do that I'll put the link up the top there for you um, but it is simply a matter of going in through both layers and coming out through the loop and we make our first stitch and this particular project we're going to keep our stitches really really tiny because it's just bind that edge so that we can add some filling so you can see those little stitches are probably only about two millimeters apart so each time I'm going through both layers and bringing my needle out through the loop do have a little look at that video if you're unsure because it does show you nice and up close but you can see that I'm just going to make my way around that whole top section and it's going to join those little edges together and give me a lovely binding stitch so stay with I'm staying with the brown all the way down to here and then I'm going to change over to my other thread and when I do that a couple of stitches down just as I did with the beading where I added a bead you can if you like add one little bead there for an earring or maybe you have a little charm a tiny little charm that would do for an earring so long as you just slip that through that stitch as you go just exactly the same way as we did with the beading you can add those little earrings to show you here on this little one you see there and just make sure that it's just a couple of stitches down from her hairline there and that will be the right position so once I've changed threads over I'm going to continue around until just the other side of the chin here because I want to leave an opening here so that I can fill this little one with some filling so just around the other side of the chin and leave your thread and needle on so that we can fill that little head you can see there my stitching done so far the two different colors there I've incorporated my little earring bead there and you can see where I finished just here so I've got this little space here to add some filling and I've left my thread and needle on just going to open up that little side section there and I'm using my forceps because that's easiest to get in here and I will just take little pieces and start off by filling out that top little bun 
Now we don't need a lot of filling in this head, just enough to plump it out and give it that little 3D look. So I will continue filling. I'll show you this one. Just enough substance in this one, just to plump that little head out. And then I will be using my wool felting needle to tuck all those fibres in and to make sure that my filling stays down in that little chin section and up here in the bun and then I will continue on with my stitch and close that opening remembering to add my second little earring bead as I go. Once you have your little head all filled and closed you can go ahead and get ready to stitch in our little eyes. Now you may want to do some more facial features than I have here. I just like to do just a little closed eye to indicate that she's looking downwards and I've got my black pearl thread and it is eight ply again and just a single strand. So I'm just going to come in from behind and come out right on that little mark that I've given you on your templates with my thread. Pull that one through, that knot will hold. And then I'm just going to check where I'm going to place my stitch. It pretty much just follows the line of that little hairline. And remember, your stitch will look smaller once it's sunken in. Just take that one through to the back again. And it's just a matter of pulling that one in until you've got a nice little slightly sunken effect there. Keep the tension up. Hold that tension with your thumb there and just do a little lock in stitch there and then you can repeat with the other side. There we go, so that has my little head completed and we can just pop that one aside while we continue on and let's complete this body with this little base. So I have again, this is all nice and dry now this base and I've got my pearl thread, it's eight ply and a single strand and a knot in the end. So I've just come in underneath here and come out right on that edge of that fabric and my knot is hidden between those layers and we're going to sew a blanket applique stitch. Stitches will probably be about four to five millimeters and I'm just going through taking the felt and coming out on the edge making sure that I'm taking up some of that body fabric each time coming out through the loop same again and each time taking up some of that fabric that's actually on the body there and that's going to bring that edge of that felt together to meet that fabric on that body. You can see there that's pulling that in that will, will continue on all the way around and it gives it a lovely neat finish like we have on this little one here and you can see especially if you're making it for a gift it's lovely when it has that beautiful little professional finish at the end. So I'm going to continue on right the way around until that's all done. So my base is done and now we're going to go ahead and attach our head to our body. Now just have a little look at it from the front. Decide exactly where you want that one to sit and how low you want it to sit. It should just sit just a little above your necklace line there. And if you have a look at the back here, you can see your button, depending on the size of it, where that will sit just to fit round. Just on that back section there. And you can have a look and see exactly where that one will come through. And you can make a mark if you like. So I've made a mark at the front of my little one there and I'm going to start by going through my button. I've got a double strand of extra strong thread and it's quite long and I haven't got a knot in the end and I'm going to come through just one side of my mark 
that I've got there. I'm going to pull that one through, leave those ends hanging. That button will slip down, that's fine, so long as it doesn't fall off. And then we're going to go and take a big stitch across the head there, right where you estimated that will sit. Make sure that it's nice and straight and notice we're just going through the filling and the backing fabric. We're not going all the way through. Just make sure it's straight as it's travelling across. Pull that one through. And then we're going to go back into the other side of that spot there and out again pull up our button and we're going to go in the other side of that button you can use a four hole button we only use two of the holes regardless Pull that one all the way through. Keeping everything straight and not twisted. Pull that one in nice and firm. And then you can check your placement from the front. See that's got really compressed there and we've got that little chin just sitting above that little neckline there. We've got some nice mobility there. Once you're happy with your placement, all you need to do is keep those, all of those nicely compressed and knot that one off at least four times and then you can snip your thread ends and that little head will be secure. If you put it through the first time and you're not happy with the placement, by all means just pull it out and start again it's not difficult to do so I'm going to get that little one all tied off and into place okay so that has our little our second little angel her body and her head all complete there we can just pop her aside and we are going to get started on her arms so we've got our little pairs of arms there and remember that they are cut from felt with fusible webbing applied I've removed that backing paper and I'm using the fusible webbing just to keep those edges bonded, not to actually use any heat on it at all. Keeps it all nice and crisp and makes it easier to sew this little seam. So we're going to be starting with a tiny little blanket stitch. Um, we're not going to turn these arms through because they're quite fine. And I've begun with, I've got a single strand of extra strong thread and I've just gone from the inside of the arm and go on between the, the actual felt itself to come out right on that edge there. You can see where I'm starting and my stitches are going to be really really tiny so probably about a millimetre and it's that same blanket stitch that we sewed around our angel's head going through both layers and coming out through the loop but the stitches are absolutely tiny because we want it to hold the filling so we want it to be really firm but to really have a nice neat little finish there so you can see I'm just coming out through the loop each time and I'm going to make my way all the way around that little arm until I come up about the same level on the other side and then I'm going to leave my thread on just as we did with the head and then I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of filling in the front of the hand and the wrist before closing that one up. So now that I've got my little arms stitched all the way around, left that top open, I'm now able to add just a tiny little bit of filling right at the very end. I'm using my very smallest forceps to do this going to tuck it in there make sure you really support that end as you do that get that filling all the way down I want a really nice firm little hand and just the very start of the wrist there because that's where we're going to be making some stitches 
so just a tiny bit and then I just like to add the smallest amount in the top of the arm here just a little bit might seem hardly worth it but it does just pat it out just a little bit so this section here where we're going to be curling our little arms around baby um, is nice and flexible and we'll be able to pull that around and still keep that nice little shape so that's all I need in that arm and now I can continue on with my stitch right the way around just to close that opening and then I've got my two little arms all ready to attach so now we're ready to add the little arms to our body so you're going to need your doll needle for this so I've got my medium doll needle with a double strand of extra strong thread on there now you want to check your arm positions based on the size of your button so my little buttons are going to sit right at the top of that arm there's just a little bit of space around them and I've just checked on the side there and we want them to sit just absolutely level so the top of the arm not the top of the button the top of the arm you want it to sit nice and level so you can make a little mark there either side right in the center like I have and what we're going to do is for the first one this time we're not going to go back and forth it's actually quite difficult to do that on this little one so what we're going to do is we're going to start with one side doesn't matter which side and we're actually just going to go in just a little below that mark with this one and we're going to go in one side of that mark and we want to come out just one side of this mark here hope you can see that I'll pull that one through we can leave some tail ends hanging because we're actually going to tie this one off so then we're going to pick up our arm make sure you've got the right arm with the arm going forward position our button and we're going to go straight through from behind find that little hole pull those threads up back through again and then we're going to dive into the body again just the other side of that mark and then we're going to come out the other side just the other side of that mark and just a little bit below because it's where we're going to be tying it on pull that one up check that your threads aren't twisted and check that they're all pulled through evenly you might have, to, might have to tug on each individual thread to get that one that needs to be pulled up make sure that's been pulled in straight and check your positioning now this little arm is going to be tucked nicely in there which also means you can leave her arms just down if that's what you prefer if you're not having a hold anything or perhaps you're just having a hold something one side um, those are, little arms do sit lovely and neat so all we have to do here is just like we did with the head where we're just going to tie off just our first knot because remember that this here is going to be hidden by the other arm so I've just pulled that in now you don't want it pulled in too tight but remember that after a bit of time that it will slacken off so you want it quite firm you want it still to be able to move and so we're just going to knot off at least four times once you've got that exactly where you want it once you've done that you just snip your thread ends and then we're going to do exactly the same with the other side only our starting point will be under this arm so that that's all nicely hidden we'll come through go through the button and the arm and we'll tie off underneath here so there we go that has our little angel's arms all nicely in place and for now we're just going to leave them down while we get organized on our wings so now we are going to do our I'm going to do a beaded blanket stitch around these wings 
you can do whatever you like you could add a little lace trim you could simply sew a ordinary blanket applique a blanket stitch around that outside edge there's so many different things that you could do um, but I'm going to show you this one I just find it lines it out nicely so I'm using my extra strong thread because I'm going to be adding beads and I've come in from behind between those two layers with a single strand and I've got a knot in the end just trim that one off and I want to hide that little knot in between those layers so I've just pulled that back it's probably a bit hard to see with the white but I'm going into that entry hole with my awl just a little way to create a little pocket in the felt so that when I pull that through that little knot is hidden in there and then that can't be seen and so now we're going to start with our blanket stitch now first of all I just make one stitch Now check out that video that I showed you before with the beaded blanket stitch that's very handy but this is what we're going to do here exactly that stitch I've got my beads ready so my first stitch is in place and now I'm going to take up a bead on my needle and I'm using larger beads with this one so my stitch length changes so I want to accommodate the bead and I want it to sit nice and flat but my stitch depth doesn't have to be very deep just enough to hold that in place so you can see I'm just coming through that loop and making sure that my stitch is happening this side of that little bead and you can see just how snug that bead sits we'll add another one Hold that one in place just like we did before take our next stitch and pull that one down into place there you can see they just they're so strong they really don't move it's such a great stitch and yes it does take time even miracles take a little time so we're going to work that stitch right the way around the entire outside now as I suggested with the little uh, divots in the heart just do an ordinary stitch at the base here don't try and put a bead in here so just put one either side with an ordinary empty stitch between it and the same with this apex here just a little bead either side and a normal stitch there and it's just a matter of making your way around that entire edge now I already have mine done so I can bring those out because I prepared that earlier because it does take its time and you can see just how lovely they come up even with that bigger bead so now I've also put in my marks which you've got on your pattern template for our ribbon here and we've got um, I've done that with an awl now because it's felt and it's double felt we can just push through that felt and it will open those fibers don't cut it this is just parting the fibers so it won't continue to tear in any way make sure that they're nice and firm nice and clean push through and now we're going to thread our uh, ribbon of choice that we've chosen to cross over which is actually going to tie these little wings on I'm going for that silver now I'm using a little threader I the name escapes me I, I can't think of what that's called I seem to feel like it's called a bobbit or something like that anyway maybe some of you know um, I've had it for years and it is just great for adding ribbons or elastic and so we're going to be threading through from behind our first lower spots and pulling my ribbon through now we need to leave some in place to be tying off on the other side so I go in from behind and then I'm going back through for the, the first two and what I want to do is make sure that I've got that all pulled in nicely without any twisting. So 
So my thumb will encourage that to go nice and flat so that we've got our first little stitch and I'm going to make sure I've got the, basically the same on either side. So that's how we start. And so our little wings are going to be tied into place up under those little arms and we're going to be crossing over I'm not going to tie it into place now because this needs to be done when you can have all of your fingers and hands and whatever free but you can see that I've crossed over the front there and I'm going to pull that really nice and snug and actually you can even add a pin right on that cross section there if you like because then you don't have to hold that tension. So then I will take this little end and I will dive it through that top little hole and pull it all the way through, take my little, we'll call it a bobbit, off thread it onto the end of this one, do the same with this one through that little top hole and that will have them both coming out here and then I can position it all and then tie it off. So if I show you on the other one it's probably easier for you to see. You can see that what we end up with is that little piece across the base and the others are coming through and then I have tied that off in a double knot and then a bow and then another knot on top. Um, you can throw a couple of stitches through there if you feel like you want that to really hold. Um, and once you've done that, you've got your little wings nicely in place and then you can remove that pin and they will sit there beautifully. And it's just, it's, it's in exactly the right position. You'll find as you tie it in, you don't even have to think about where it's sitting because it's just gonna sit exactly right. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow that same procedure and get those wings tied in place. And there we have our little wings beautifully in place with that lovely effect of that little bow behind there. So our next step is to create our little baby. Now perhaps you're not giving this little one a baby to hold, perhaps you could just pop a little heart uh, under her arm there. She could hold something with one arm Perhaps you just want her plain like this, which is perfectly fine. But because we're going to be crossing these little arms over at the front so that she can hold her, her little baby, we're going to need our baby first before we do that stitching, um, as I have here on this one. So we're gonna let those sit there, but you can see that if you do want to leave it just plain, you certainly can. You could also just tie perhaps a little wrist charm with another heart, something like that. There's so many different ways you can work with this project. But let's get started on making our little baby. So just before we start our baby, I'm just going to show you what I've done here. You can see on the little angel's arms there that I have just stitched through, starting from the back with my extra strong thread. And I've just stitched through those wrists so that they are crossed over together. But I've made sure that I've gone along a little way, not just on one spot. If you just sew on one spot, then that creates a pivot and those little hands can move. But if you go one, two, three stitches back and forth, try and be going back into the same hole that you started with so that those stitches are more invisible from the front. And of course, use a matching thread. Then you've got your little arms cradled, ready to hold little baby. Um, and little baby, if you've kept to all of the dimensions through this project, your little baby will fit fine. So she's all ready to catch this little baby. And so now we're gonna start with our making a little baby. It's really simple. So we start with our chenille stick and the length that we're after for the little spine that we make is around about four and a half centimeters. So that's my first bend. So fold that one right over and then we're going to fold again. So I've got three lengths now and then I'm gonna fold over again for the fourth. And you can add another one if you like. It just depends on how 
big the hole in your bead is. So snip off the excess and we're going to give it a little twist just to hold it all nicely together particularly that top section. Now your sharp ends if you can they're the ones that we want to push into that bead and we're just going to push that in just over halfway just so it's nice and securely in there and then we're going to give that a little bit of a bend ready for our wrapping. So that's it, that's that simple. Make sure you've got your bead, the front facing where you want it. My little spine. So then you take your wadding and we start from the back with a straight edge across what would be the back of the neck. And we're just going to fold upwards Bring it around and we're just going to start wrapping nice and firm and we're just going to create this is no real science to this we're just creating a nice little swaddled shape I've got my needle ready with my extra strong thread just to stitch this one in place so it's just about tucking and folding. That bit of wadding and I've got my extra strong thread and I'm already here with a knot in the end and all I'm going to do is tack that little bundle. None of this will be seen or be covered by our swaddle cloth. I will just tack all these little edges into place and across the bottom there ready to be wrapped. So that has my little bundle all wrapped and stitched. Make sure you've got a nice little curve on that back spine there. And now we're going to take our little swaddle cloth. Now whatever you're using, I've just turned the edge under of my little stretch fabric there and sewn just a little zigzag stitch. On this little one, I've just sewn a tiny little blanket stitch because that was muslin. So whichever you like, or perhaps you just want to fold it over that very top edge, that's fine. Because this is a top edge that's going to go across baby's forehead. So we want to find the center. Now I've run a thin line of clear craft glue just on that middle section there. And I'm going to pop that right in the center. Down on baby's forehead. And it's easiest to lay baby down here. Now, however you want to swaddle your baby is entirely up to you. But I find that if I press that down, I've got my two pieces out at the side and I can pull that because this is stretch fabric. I've got probably a little more play in mine. So I can fold it over and over again across that chest just to tuck under that chin. Do the same on this side. Over and then over again. Just want to expose a little bit of face there. Tuck those raw edges under and then I will fold over, over. And take that one to the back. Now you can throw a pin in as you go and of course I'm going to tidy that up and make sure that that's nice and squared on that little neckline there and then you just take your matching thread and you can just put a couple of stitches in here and then turn it over and you can stitch tuck under your edges and stitch those little bottom edges in place as you can see I have here on this little one what you end up with is a lovely neat little bundle so however, however you swaddle and wrap it um, it really doesn't matter so long as what you end up with is a nice little baby swaddle like that so I'm going to stitch those little edges all into place so there we go we have our completed second little angel there holding her little precious bundle you can see absolutely beautiful I love the quietness and the simplicity of this little project 
and of course I have gone ahead and added my little string of which is just a string of extra strong thread with some beads threaded on it and tied behind you can stitch it into place if you like and I've just added my trim at the base there just with some clear craft glue and that's glued in well there so that is our finished project. Now remember that you can personalise these, you could add a little name, perhaps you could add some words um, and also if you don't want your remember that they can have arms down not holding a baby or perhaps they can just hold something like you could create a little felt heart um, or perhaps something uh, with a little message, um, just something that brings comfort and joy. So I certainly hope you've enjoyed making my little angel. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this little one come together. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. How, are you following me on Instagram? If you are, thank you so much. It's great to have you with me and love to chat to you about anything at all and uh, see what you've been busy creating. So you also get to see these little projects in their first design stages coming together and that's always really exciting. I try and keep you all posted. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because it's a very warm and welcoming community that we have here at Pay It Forward and I would love to have you jump on board and enjoy all of the free patterns and projects. Thank you all so much for paying it forward. So many have been, so many of you have been telling me how you've been creating my projects and giving them as gifts and that just spreads joy. So thank you so much. In the meantime, everybody stay safe. And most of all, when something great comes to you in your day, please don't just keep it for yourself. Please enjoy it and then pay it forward. Till next time, it's Huru from me.